I want you to take in a deep breath, hold it, and slowly release it. Take in another deep breath, hold it, and slowly release it. And as you relax, I want you to remember that this is the day the Lord has made. So let us take time to start our day with a feeling of spiritual well-being. Take in a deep breath, hold it, and release. Let every voice but God be still within you. As you take in breaths, do not think about the past and do not dream about the future. Just think about the here and now. And if your mind starts to wander, bring your attention back to your breathing. God is a good God. He put breath in our bodies. Use it to help relax you. Take comfort in knowing that God is everywhere. He is surrounding you with love. Think love. Think peace. Think comfort. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. I want you now to relax. Think about the beauty of the world around you. Think about nature. Think about the trees, how majestically they stand. Think about the sun, which warms the earth. Think about the rain, which cleans the earth. Think about the mountains. Think about the grass that grows green and brings beauty. Think about what God has placed here for you to enjoy, for you to feel comfort. I want you just to sit back, relax, breathing in and breathing out. your imagination and just imagine you are walking outside and the sun is shining and as you walk you feel a glow come over you the glow of the sun penetrating your body making you feel love, making you feel comfort, knowing that it is God's love and it is God's comfort. I want you just to stand there, take it all in, feel the love around you, slowly breathing in, and breathing out. Notice the trees. 
Notice the grass. Notice the blue sky. As you feel the warmth of the sun penetrating on you, I want you to take in another deep breath. Hold it and slowly in your imagination, take yourself back to the comfort of the space you are in. It is now time to come back to the here and now. I want you to move your hands, move your fingers around. And then I want you to move your shoulders up and down and around. Feel the relaxation coming over your body. And as you breathe in with this next exhale, I want you to let it flow through your body. Breathe in and breathe out. It is now time to come back to the here and the now. Namaste. Good morning and welcome to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, for this is the day the Lord has made. Come on, aren't you glad about it? Happy holiday season. Well, we come to lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, come, let us adore him. We invite you to stand to your feet as we enter into our worship. We come to glorify our God. Hallelujah. Oh, come, let us adore him. If you have breath in your body, come on and just raise your hands to the Lord and begin to usher yourself into the presence of your God. Hallelujah. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come.
just want to come and thank God for his presence. For how many know his name is above all names? Well, we want to introduce the song today. Namaste, my brothers and sisters in Christ. What a blessing it is for us to be. You know that God has blessed each and every one of us. Let's get right into the word of God. John, the first chapter, beginning with verse 1 through 13. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and he was with God from the beginning. Though things were made, all were things were made by him, and in him was life, was the light of the world. He was the light, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 9, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was the light of the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of the natural descent, nor of the human or husband's will, but of God's will. I wanna talk about the clearing in a distance. As I come to share this word of God this morning, I am mindful that this is the last Sunday before we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus the Christ. And because of this season of Advent focuses on the coming, the anticipation of the Messiah, the anointed one to bring salvation, to bring deliverance to the oppressed on the earth. Oddly enough, my mind took me back to an experience I had several years ago while I was boarding a plane from New York, JFK to Los Angeles. My flight was scheduled for 6.40 a.m. I had to get to Los Angeles at uh, 10 a.m. for an 11 a.m. funeral. When I went to uh, get in line, I saw or glanced at a book entitled A Clearing in the Distance. Now, while I wasn't able to look at the book right then because I had to catch the flight, right before I was able to board the flight, they closed the door and told us to put our electronic devices away. I used my cell phone to Google the title of the book and discovered that there was something powerful. This book, which was written by Wiltold Rebunsky, which told the life story of Frederick Law Olmsted. Olmsted was an architect landscape of the 19th century who designed Central Park. Olmsted was considered the father of natural parks and yet it was his skill and perspective in looking into miles of forest and seeing a clearing in the distance. And on the front page of the book, he has a quote that says, have, I have all of my life considered the distance effects and always sacrificing immediate success of the applause to that of the future. In other words, his life's aims was to see life differently than others, to see what others could see as fuzzy and foggy through that the marvelous sacred landscapes. And you know, my brothers and sisters, is that not the challenge of every one of us in faith to see, to have the spiritual sight and imagination to not just see the forests of our life, but to partnership with God to see what we can produce. See this pandemic that we're going through, we can see the restrictions and the forests of regretful realities. And yet we need to understand that God challenges us to see beyond all of the forests, the restrictions. The same way that our ancestors saw how the white Christians would profess the love of Christ in church yet show anything but love to black and brown bodies. 
See, they saw this, yet they also saw the clearing in the distance. <laughs> A clearing that would not just allow them to see uh, that God loved black and brown people just as well, but a faith to imagine even beyond what they were going through. Uh, they, they understood that beyond uh, the fuzzy and beyond the forest, that they would be able to know that God would give them the power to do exceedingly abundantly above all they might ask or think. In other words, the question is, how can we see the larger picture? I know, brothers and sisters, their funerals, their financial. What will happen, God? What's the bigger picture? And yet, my assignment and our assignment is to remind each other again and again, there is a clearing in the distance. There is a bomb in Gilead. There is help in the midst of our hellish situations. There is option for those of us who feel boxed in and who feel cornered. There is a clearing in the distance. And someone who's tuned in today, you might feel that you're at your wit's end, dealing with how much life seems to be bigger than and struggling with what you thought life would be. Thinking that in your mind that what you're going through will not make a difference in whatever efforts that you engage. And yet, brothers and sisters, the challenge of the faith is to allow our spirits to change so that we can see it not just through our own eyes, but see it through the eyes of our God. That God has a, 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 a vision that we need to be in tune with. And so in this Advent season, we celebrate how God partnered with God himself, Mary, Joseph, and John the Baptist in a divine process of clearing the way for our deliverance and our salvation. And so at the time of this text, we find that John the Revelator writes uh, not so much a, a, a synoptic gospel as the other Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but John seeks to paint a picture of Jesus, not just as son of God. See, John describes uh, Jesus as the manifestation of God himself. He says, in the beginning was the word, the logos, and the word was with God, and the word was God. See, in the beginning, John introduces a concept that would later be described in religious circles as homoousias. In essence, it is the same substance. Just as water manifests in liquid, in frozen, and vapor, so too is the essence of God as creator, as Christ, and as comforter. That's why, brothers and sisters, we engage in the reality of the, of the Trinity. That is, God is companion through the Holy Spirit, God is Christ through Jesus, and God is creator uh, through God, our Mother, Father. And we're thankful and grateful that God is all of the companion. God is all of that at the same time. See, I believe it was what Brother Patrick Williams in the male chorus who last sang the song in worship that reminded us that God is, God is my protection. God is my all in all. God is my light in darkness. God is my joy in times of sorrow. God is my, he removes pain and strife. Uh, God is. He's promised to keep me, never to leave me. He'll never, ever fall short of his word. God is my all <laughs> at all. And I'm thankful, brothers and sisters, that God spoke through John to talk to us, to move beyond our narrow thinking about who God is. That God can never be limited to who we think and what we've experienced. That God is beyond and God is in all. And so in verse three and four, he teaches us about the nature of God and the reason why God was so creative was the very essence of God was life and light. He was life and light and yet the darkness comprehended it not. 
which lets me know, brothers and sisters, that in the midst of the darkness, light and darkness can exist at the same time. See, that's why, brothers and sisters, fun folks don't understand how we can have peace in the midst of our problems, how we can have strength in the midst of our struggle, how we can have joy in the midst of the jolts of life. <laughs> because light uh, can coexist even in the midst of darkness. And see, we're living in Christ-centered life. We can tap into the life that is inside of us. See, like John says in verse six, he described uh, Jesus, his purpose and his assignment. See, John the revelator, his assignment uh, was not to be the light, but rather to bear witness to the light that was to come. See, John the Baptist understood that he was not the root of the light, but rather a reflection of And all this Advent season, my brothers and sisters, it is my prayer that we understand that we are reflectors of the light and the life of Jesus. Reflectors projecting upon that, with that which is based on what is within us. Let me say that again. We have been created with the light and the life of Jesus when we are in divine connection. We will reflect that light in the midst of COVID, in the midst of economic uh, anxieties, that Jesus is still the reason for the season. See, our individual and collective assignment is to allow our lights shine, to be sure to people that there is a clearing that is to come. And so in verses 10 through 13, we read, as a matter of fact, John lets us know uh, that what we have received, uh, we have received from God. And there may be some folk who may not be ready to receive what we have, the light that we have. You see, brothers and sisters, I believe uh, that the record says that Jesus came to his own and his own received him not. See, I believe Jesus was, uh, was really um, the original, the original undercover boss. Jesus was the original undercover boss. He came to his own <laughs> and his own received him not. You see, my brothers and sisters, Jesus gives us an example <clears throat> of how we might be able to respond to how people <clears throat> receive the light and the life that we offer them. John tells us that, uh, that Jesus says that when they receive you, let it be. Uh, but all those who have received him, he has given them power to become. Hmm. That, that's a word right there for somebody in here. That, that sometimes even our own families, even our own acquaintances, even the people that we study, that we talk with, sometimes they may not uh, receive all that God has. But as you engage in the clearing, you'll understand that when you are ready to receive, God will give you the power to become. Ah, my brothers and sisters, I love that word, that phrase that John the Revelator reminds us that as we say, yes, Lord, here I am. Yes, Lord, I'm ready to receive the clearing in the distance. I'm ready to shift my mind. I'm ready to shift my thinking. I'm thankful that God has given us through Jesus the Christ the power to become that, 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 that's an exciting word in the midst of these moments that seem to be claustrophobic in our lives, the, in the midst of the moments where people might only judge you of your past and judge you of what they think you look like in your present. Ah, I'm thankful that today there is a clearing ah, in the distance. May not be able to see it all, may not be able to touch it all right now, but because we receive Jesus as our Lord, as our Savior, God 
God has given Jesus the authority and placed that authority inside of us that we might be able to become, to become more than what people say, to become more than what society says, to become more than what this white supremacist culture will try to make us think that God said. But y'all do know that every now and then folk will lie on God. Folk have been lying on God since we've been in this country, telling us who we were and who we who God said we were supposed to be. But that is a lie. This text says there's a clearing in the distance <coughs> so that you will understand that God has created you and I to become more like Jesus, to become. That is infinite possibilities. Uh, I'm thankful and I'm grateful to God that on this Sunday before we celebrate the birth of Jesus the Christ, we can glory in the fact that God has given us the power to become. Brother, sister, if you're here right now and you're struggling, feeling that the world is caving in on you, feeling as though you have no space, that you cannot move around, feeling that the options are few, I am here to remind you, hang in there, brother, hang in there, sister. There's a clearing in the distance. The Lord will shift and the Lord will chop and the Lord will move everything that needs to be moved so that you and I can become who we are to be in God. To the glory of God. Amen. We thank you today. We thank you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of your word that reminds us that we walk by faith and not just by our physical sight, that in the midst of all that is happening, there is a clearing in the distance. In the midst of the pressures and the way that life can seems to corner us, the way that we can corner ourselves, thank you, God, that you have provided a clearing in the distance. Now, God, we thank you that the clearing that, that in the distance and the timing of that is not just based on Kronos time. We're, we're ending this year, and, and we know that there's still going to be <coughs> work to do in next year, clearing. But right now, God, we thank you that this Advent season reminds us that you sent your son. You came yourself through your son same substance, to remind us that you will clarify our perspective of who you are. You will clarify our roles of who we are as reflectors of the light. And then God, you will give us the power to become all that you desire us to become. Thank you, God. Thank you for that power. God, we come uh, lifting up all of those who are going through bereavement because we realize that as much as we can passionately proclaim your, the goodness of your word, we do understand, God, that there are those who, who feel that overwhelming sense whether it's grief, whether it's loss, whether it's the pressure to perform, whether it's the pressure to provide for their families, their friends, whether uh, whatever the pressure is, God, it is our prayer that you might remind them uh, that you sent Jesus for us to be that clearing, to be that one that reminds us <clears throat> that, that, that vision is possible, that light and life is possible, even in the midst of all that we go through. Thank you for your people. Thank you for not only healing us and hearing us, thank you for strengthening us because yes, for some, this is a heavy season. Yes, for some, this is a challenging season. And yet for some of us, this is a season of triumph because for some of us, we didn't know if we were gonna make it to this Sunday but we're here right now. Didn't know how we were gonna make it to this Sunday, <laughs> but we're here and in the midst of all that we're going through, if we tell the truth, we're feeling pretty good. If we tell the truth, 
uh, the, the situations haven't managed to take all of our joy. We still got some joy inside of us, God. We still have some peace inside of us, God. And so with that joy and with that peace that is with us in this season, we're going to give your name glory. We're going to give your name honor. We're going to bless your name. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Thank you, Mount Airy, for, uh, for tuning in. Listen, um, we have a, uh, a season. We're thankful and grateful to God uh, for you on yesterday. Uh, we're thankful that uh, so many of you uh, either sent or, or informed people that uh, there was a toy giveaway. And uh, we're thankful that we were able to give more toys to more people than we anticipated. And, uh, and that's always a blessing, that God provided what we needed, uh, and yet there was still the need. And so thank you, Mount Airy. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you, Mount Airy, uh, for celebrating my birthday on last Sunday. Last Sunday after I finished up here and packed up, Donna um, um, gave me instructions uh, that she was told that I had to follow. And I followed them to the best of my ability. And I'm thankful we had a marvelous celebration. I felt so hearted uh, by seeing many of your faces. Thank you, Mount Airy, for your gifts, your cards, uh, your bumps, uh, fist bumps, your um, uh, well wishes, your smiles, even through uh, the masks. Uh, those of you who've called, who text, who sent Facebook messages, got that double nickel or the speed limit in the city. Uh, and so I am thankful and grateful to God uh, that I can celebrate it with you and my family. Uh, and so thank you again. Uh, Mount Airy, please tune in on this Friday. Please tune in on this Friday. You know, we will honor the real reason for the season, which is the birth of Jesus the Christ. So it is my brother it is my desire that you tune in from whatever space and place you will be in. I promise you that God has a powerful and mighty and rhema word for us that it might continue to clear some of the forests, some of the debris, some of the fog that we can find ourselves in in the midst of this time. I'm going to ask right now, brothers and sisters, that you join me, all right? I, in the midst of making sure I got this uh, production uh, presentation right, the lighting and everything right, uh, I didn't bring up my elements. But uh, uh, in the spirit, uh, I, am, I want to partake with you as we prepare to go down uh, from this, these moments together. And so I'm going to ask that you partake the elements, the bread, for the bread symbolizes the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Pray that you eat as we eat together. In the same way, he, he took the cup saying, this is the blood of the New Testament shed for the remission of sins. Drink ye also. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. We are thankful and grateful to God for you. We pray again that you will tune in and continue to keep uh, the Mount Airy Church family, the staff, its leaders, keep us all in prayer that God might continue to do great work as we clear the way for God to do great things. God bless you. God keep you. <laughs>